A while ago, I did a video taking a look at this device, which is a Yamaha Disk Orchestra. It is a MIDI synthesizer intended to play back MIDI files from a floppy disk. And I really like this device. It's cool. The MIDI playback is pretty good. There are some problems and it sounds fine. The options are really good. It can record to the disk and, you know, it's a pretty cool device. I have a full video on it if you want to go check that out. But I said that there was one problem with this device, and really it wasn't its fault. Now, for those of you who've played Doom as much as I have, that probably sounded just a little bit off. And that stems from the fact that this is a Yamaha disc orchestra, not a Roland disc orchestra. I'm not sure Roland ever made such a thing, but the key difference here is that it's a Yamaha synthesizer. Well, it turns out Roland did make a MIDI synthesizer with a floppy drive built in that's capable of playing MIDIs off a disc, and I've finally got my hands on one. This is a Roland MT200, a general MIDI synthesizer, but more importantly, it's also a General Standard synthesizer. General Standard was the name Roland gave to the extra features they added on top of General MIDI. It's part of what made the devices that Roland made so special, like the SC55, which this is actually extremely similar to. It is not a sound canvas device, but it's very compatible. Now, the disc orchestra on top here was billed more as a learning aid and you would get piano sheet music on paper along with music accompaniments on floppy disk to play with. The Roland MT200 though is meant as a mixing and sequencer device that can actually produce music. They can both do that, but this one is much better suited to it. It has more features that are in line with that production. However, that's about all I know. Unlike the Yamaha, where I was able to test it out before I did this video, the Roland actually doesn't work. Like most music devices, it seems, the Roland uses a 9 volt DC power supply, but with a negative center. Now, I did get this with the correct original power supply, which hopefully means that the problem with this device isn't that someone plugged in the wrong power supply. However, with the original power supply connected, it does do nothing, so it does seem like a global failure of the power supply, because there's absolutely nothing going on with the device once I push that. Now I just picked this thing up yesterday, so I haven't had a lot of chances to get to know it too much, but I did open it up and have a pretty good idea what the problem is. So let me open it up again here so I can show you what I'm looking at as the prime suspect. Okay, so this is the main board for the MT200. The top side just has the buttons and the LCD and the floppy drive, which connects right here. Now, all of these parts, I've kind of looked over and I can't really see anything wrong with them, except for the power jack. Now I have to get in there at a pretty severe angle, but if you see underneath, all the pads are broken loose that the power jack is soldered down to. So I need to get underneath the board and rerun wires where the traces used to be because I bet they're all broken off entirely. So it's just not getting any power at all because someone ripped off the power jack. Well, it's still in the hole here, but you know, it's ripped off from the board. I was half wondering if it was going to be cold solder joints that let go, but oh no, that's uh, that's super not. That's <laughs> yeah, especially the center pin there. Oh, that's super ripped up trace, which is kind of surprising. Those are some chunky pads in there. They, they didn't screw around. Although it doesn't have um, pads on the top as well, so there there are no barrels through there. It's not plated internally. So it is just this side, kind of a really poor choice. And it is a double-sided board. I mean, if I flip around, 
you can see they could have easily put copper there, but no, they decided to make it weak, and well, it paid the price. It's also kind of dirty in there now that I can see that up close. Blah. When I get this soldered back in there, I'm going to have to clean that maybe. Yeah, so uh, yeah, let's, let's take a look at what we're going to have to do here, though. So we can look at this and see this pin clearly just goes to that one. Pretty simple. These two are tied. So this one down here is the actual pin that's meant to touch the outside of the barrel. This one is a sense pin that's just sensed when it's closed and really doesn't matter that they're tied. That's fine. You can do it either way. Um, and those just go off to this pin. Now there are some cheater layers on here that we need to be aware of. So this is only a two layer circuit board, it looks like. Um, but they've gone ahead and grafted another layer of conductive material on top. So you can see these blue vias. So you can see here there's this unusual strip here. Well, I bet they've added some more conductive layers on top of this so they could get a three layer board because the top side doesn't have this. The top side does have the blue layer applied to it, but it looks like it's only to tent the vias. There aren't any traces other than the ones in the copper. And the entire bottom side of the board looks like this. There's blue vias all over. So, yeah, um, we'll need to make sure that we don't damage any of that. Because that would be a really bad thing. Actually, no, I'm think thinking about this here, looking at it. They may have used this as a power plane. Wow, that's... Huh, okay. That's one way of doing it, I guess. But, yeah, anyway, so <laughs> I want to make sure I don't mess those up. Because uh, you can't solder to those, so it'll just be gone. It's basically an adhesive that's conductive, and, well, you can't solder to glue, so. Yep, all right. So I'll just, yeah, run a wire from here to here and here to here. It would be nice if I could strengthen this so it doesn't just wobble around anymore, but once I put wires on there, it's not really going to matter, and it's not going to pull out because these have the plates, the pads on them, so, yeah, they're not going anywhere. Okay, so I did go back and get this cleaned up, yada yada, that's not really what I want to show you. I was looking at this side of the board over here at these bodge wires, and noticed how they did a trace cut. They just nipped out part of the board. They did it twice on here. There's just a crater where the trace used to run. I don't know what tool they're using to do that, but jeez, man, I'm used to the board kind of flaking apart. That's just like it's made out of ceramic and it was chipped out. It's crazy. And you can see a lot more of the uh, extra layers on here for the uh, cheater <laughs> PCB layer here. Eh. It's interesting seeing all those weird blue vias on here. All right, now the moment of truth. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah, that's... That's awesome. All right, let's uh, let's just do one quick little test here while I got it. Uh, that's not in tremendous condition, but let's see if it can use a high density disc. Improper disc. Well, that one's not in great shape. Uh, how about that one? That one's looking better. Come on, don't be double density only. Improper disc. Double density disc. Ugh. Improper disc. Hmm. Oh, don't tell me it drives bad. <laughs> that box floppies go. Here we go. Double double densities. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Huh. Okay. So all is not right with the Roland. Meh. Anyway. Okay. So clearly, I'm not done with this yet. But it's powered up, so getting a lot closer. Okay, so here's the drive, and if we take a look at the back, it is just a standard floppy drive, but it's not a TIAC, it's a Shenon? I don't know. But here we have some markings that describe the pinout of these jumpers, and it's set to drive zero. So I will have to get this one working um, because, yeah, most floppy drives you can't set to drive zero, so. 
yeah, this is not a very standard floppy drive. Now, I was just I was just hoping I could replace it rather than try and clean it. <laughs> because I don't know, it sounds like this one may be on hope. But thankfully, you know, while I, 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 I like the idea of playing music off of floppy disks, that's not the whole reason I wanted this thing. So at least I'm not, you know, bound to using the floppy drive. Yeesh, it's pretty uh dirty in there, so maybe I will be able to just resuscitate this drive. That'd be nice. The squealing of the motor doesn't thrill me, and I can hear it, but it doesn't sound too bad, so maybe it won't be unrecoverable. I've had much worse drive motors, so yeah. Oh man, it just gets worse and worse the deeper I look. Blech. See if blowing air in there will help at all. Yeah, a little bit. Need freer access, though. Alright, I've tried a whole host of things on this sucker, and I just... I can't get it to work at all. Come on. You are kidding me. Okay, now it's an improper disc. Huh, that was interesting. Um, that took it a while. That was the first time I put in the resume creator disc. Um, I think all of these should be formatted. I don't really know, though. I'm... Why? This is one I know is formatted. Okay, improper disc. Yeah, so... It just doesn't want to work. It should be able to format a disc, at least I would think the Yamaha can format a disc, so I can't imagine why this one wouldn't be able to. So, improper disc. Nothing I can do will make this work. Now, you'd think oh, you can just replace the floppy drive, but no, again, it has the drive zero on there, and you can't adjust that on a normal floppy drive. There's just no options on a normal drive, and no, you can't use a twisted cable to change it back. It doesn't work. I tried. So, uh, it's looking like I'm not going to be able to use the floppy portion of this thing, no matter how much I want to. But that doesn't mean it's useless, because it does still have the MIDI ports over here. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and put it all back together here, and just spend some time getting to know it over the MIDI ports, and then continue the video from there because I, I I gotta get it to do something before I know how to use it. I'll just mention one more thing while I'm getting this put back together. Um, yes, I know I could replace the floppy drive with something like a GoTech, but I don't want to. I want a floppy drive. That's the whole point. If I wanted to just have a digital way of copying data over to this thing, I would just use the MIDI input ports on the back. That's what they're there for. I don't need to plug a flash drive into this and then play MIDI files off of that. That's not what I want to do. I want the floppy disk experience. So, yeah, you'll forgive me that I'm not going to get a GoTech to replace the thing in here because that's not what I want. And even still, if I was going to do that, it may not be easy with the problematic drive interface. I think you might be able to get one for that because they're actually meant for industrial machines, so they're probably made to work with stuff like this, which have the unusual drive interface. But again, that's it's not what I want, so that's not what I'm going to do. Okay, so I still haven't gone off and done my research yet, but check this out. no error. So here's what I did. I took a disk and I waited, came up here, went to the disk menu using shift, went up to disk format, got it ready, put in my disk, then let it go. And bam! Formatting! Now, I haven't tested this disk yet to see what the format it actually is using. Um, 
these are high density disks, so and it's doing 80 tracks, so it should be just 1.44 megabytes. Um, probably going to be, I think it's FAT16 on floppy disks, so hey, this thing may work yet still. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure these were good though, so I don't know why it was rejecting them before. Maybe it is going to have used a weird custom Roland floppy disk format. I don't know. I will find out though. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, now it is time for me to go off. Oh, right, right, right. Or it, it worked with this one. I guess I just need to get some better floppy disks. Or maybe that drive's still a little, little bit finicky. Either way, it's working at least somewhat. I have one functional <laughs> disk. <laughs> I'm sure if I dig around, I'll find some more. So, yep, getting closer here. Now it's now I'm just gonna go do some testing. And this time for real, I'm gonna go do my testing.